Welcome to Fluids and Electrolytes, Part 2. Today, we continue our essential journey into the world of fluids and electrolytes, a cornerstone of clinical care that can truly make the difference between life and death. In this second part of our series, we'll dive deeper, exploring fluid types, tonicity, maintenance, and special clinical scenarios. I promise to make these complex concepts simple, practical, and even a little exciting. By the end of this session, you'll be equipped to make safer, smarter fluid management decisions for your patients. Let's get started. Fluid therapy is a foundational intervention in clinical practice. Proper administration maintains intravascular volume, ensures tissue perfusion, and preserves acid-base balance. Conversely, inappropriate use can lead to complications such as pulmonary edema, electrolyte disturbances, or organ failure. Precision in fluid selection and dosing is not just beneficial, it is life-saving. Standardized color coding for IV cannulas streamlines clinical workflows. Memorization of standard colors, for example, green for 18-gauge catheters, pink for 20-gauge catheters in trauma, blue for 22-gauge in pediatrics can save precious seconds in emergencies. This system reduces errors during emergencies, ensuring rapid access and delivery of appropriate therapies. IV fluids are categorized into crystalloids, colloids, blood products, and specialized solutions. Crystalloids, such as normal saline, are first line for most scenarios. Colloids, like albumin, are reserved for critical volume expansion. Blood products address specific deficits, while specialized solutions, such as TPN, meet unique metabolic needs. Crystalloids consist of water and electrolytes, freely crossing vascular membranes. Common types include isotonic normal saline, balanced Ringer's lactate, and hypertonic 3% saline. Recent evidence favors balanced crystalloids, like plasmolite, over normal saline to mitigate hyperchloramic acidosis and renal injury, particularly in large volume resuscitation. Colloids contain large molecules, such as albumin or hydroxyethyl starch, which increase oncotic pressure and retain intravascular volume. Indications include hypoalbuminemia or refractory hypovolemia. However, synthetic colloids carry risks. Starch solutions may impair renal function, and albumin is costly. Continuous hemodynamic monitoring is essential to avoid volume overload. Total Parenteral Nutrition, or TPN, provides complete nutritional support for patients with non-functional gastrointestinal tracts. Lipid emulsions prevent essential fatty acid deficiency. Hypertonic saline and mannitol are niche agents. Hypertonic saline for severe hyponatremia or cerebral edema and mannitol for reducing intracranial pressure. These fluids demand meticulous monitoring to prevent complications. Careful electrolyte and blood glucose monitoring is critical with TPN. Tonicity dictates fluid movement across membranes. Isotonic solutions like normal saline maintain equilibrium. Hypotonic fluids such as 0.45% saline hydrate cells but risk cerebral edema in brain injuries. Hypertonic solutions, including 3% saline, pull water into the vasculary, reserved for critical cases. Always align tonicity with the patient's physiological state. Fluid therapy serves four objectives. Resuscitation to restore perfusion in shock, maintenance to meet daily physiological needs, replacement of ongoing losses from vomiting or drains, and nutrition for patients unable to tolerate oral intake. Each goal requires tailored strategies to optimize outcomes. Daily maintenance fluids for adults average 25 to 30 ml per kilogram. Pediatric calculations follow the Holiday Sager formula. 100 ml per kilogram for the first 10 kilograms, 50 ml per kilogram for the next 10 kilograms, and 20 ml per kilogram thereafter. Adjustments are mandatory in renal failure, heart disease, or geriatric patients to prevent fluid overload. Consider a 70 kg adult. 70 multiplied by 30 ml per kilogram yields 2100 ml daily, or approximately 87 ml per hour. For a 12 kg child, 10 kg at 100 ml per kilogram equals 1000 ml, 
plus 2 kilograms at 50 ml per kilogram for 100 ml, totaling 1100 ml daily, 45 ml hourly. These calculations are frameworks. Clinical judgment must guide final decisions. In hypovolemic or septic shock, administer a 20 ml per kilogram bolus of isotonic crystalloid, normal saline or ringer's lactate, over 15 to 30 minutes. Assess response via blood pressure, heart rate, urine output, and mentation. If no improvement, repeat the bolus or initiate vasopressors. Timely intervention is critical to prevent irreversible organ damage. Burns require the Parkland formula. 4 ml multiplied by weight in kilograms and total body surface area burned. Half is given in the first 8 hours. In sepsis, early aggressive crystalloid resuscitation precedes vasopressors. For head injuries, avoid hypotonic fluids to prevent cerebral edema. Cardiac patients demand cautious, frequent reassessment to avoid decompensation. Calculating IV fluid drip rates is a fundamental skill for safe administration. The formula is drops per minute equals volume in milliliters multiplied by the drop factor, divided by time in minutes. Drop factors vary by tubing. Macro drip sets deliver 15 to 20 drops per milliliter. Ideal for rapid infusions. Micro drip sets deliver 60 drops per milliliter, providing precise control for pediatric or critical care. Mastering this calculation ensures accurate delivery preventing under- or overhydration. Always confirm the drop factor printed on the IV tubing before starting. Precision here is non-negotiable. Let's apply the formula to real-world examples. First example. A physician orders 1,000 ml of normal saline over 6 hours using a macro drip set with 15 drops per ml. Step 1. Convert hours to minutes. 6 hours into 60 equals to 360 minutes. Step 2. Calculate ml per hour. 1,000 ml divided by 6 equals to 166.7 ml hour. Step 3. Apply the formula 166.7 ml into 15 drops per ml divided by 60 minutes equals to 42 drops per minute. Second example. A patient requires 500 ml of dextrose normal saline over 4 hours via a micro drip set, that means 60 drops per ml. Step 1. Convert hours to minutes. 4 hours into 60 equals to 240 minutes. Step 2. Calculate ml per hour. 500 ml divided by 4 equals to 125 ml per hour. Step 3. For micro drip, Drops per minute equal ml per hour, that is 125 drops per minute. In high-stakes emergencies, rapid calculations are essential. For macro drip sets, divide the hourly rate in milliliters by 4 to estimate drops per minute. With micro drip sets, the hourly rate equals the drops per minute. For example, 100 ml per hour becomes 25 drops per minute for macro drip or 100 drops per minute for micro drip. This rule is a temporary measure. Always verify with precise calculations when time permits. These rough estimates are life-saving in the first moments but should be corrected afterward. Avoid tunnel vision. Fluid therapy requires dynamic assessment. Tailor choices to the patient's physiology. Avoid hypotonic fluids in brain injuries and hypertonic solutions in severe dehydration. Overcorrection of hyponatremia risks osmotic demyelination. Limit sodium correction to less than 10 to 12 millimoles per liter in 24 hours. In burns, overresuscitation leads to fluid creep and compartment syndromes. For sepsis, balance early aggressive fluids with later vigilance for overload. Intravenous fluids serve three core roles rapid resuscitation, electrolyte correction, and acid-base stabilization. Crystalloids, being cost-effective and versatile, are first line for most scenarios. Colloids are reserved for critical volume expansion. Blood products address specific deficits like anemia or coagulopathy. 
Mastery of these categories ensures targeted, evidence-based care. Crystalloids are classified by tonicity. Isotonic solutions such as normal saline and Ringer's lactate maintain vascular volumes without shifting water. Hypotonic fluids like 0.45% saline hydrate cells but risk edema in closed spaces. Hypertonic solutions, including 3% saline, draw water into the vasculature, reserved for severe hyponatremia or cerebral edema. Each type demands context-specific application. NS, or 0.9% sodium chloride, is isotonic with an osmolarity of 308 milliosmoles per kilogram. It is first line for hypovolemia, hemorrhagic shock, and metabolic alkalosis. However, excessive use can cause hyperchloramic metabolic acidosis and acute kidney injury. Exercise caution in heart failure or renal impairment, where sodium and fluid retention may exacerbate conditions. Ringer's lactate contains sodium, potassium, calcium, chloride, and lactate, with an osmolarity of 273 milliosmoles per liter. It is preferred for burns, trauma, and acidosis due to its balanced electrolyte profile. Lactate is metabolized to bicarbonate, aiding pH correction. Contraindications include hyperkalemia and liver failure, where lactate metabolism is impaired. Dextrose normal. Saline combines 5% dextrose with 0.9% NaCl, yielding a hypertonic solution. It provides calories and volume, but is unsuitable for resuscitation due to hyperglycemia risks. Use cautiously in diabetes or renal dysfunction. Its role is limited to maintenance in stable patients with hypoglycemia risk or caloric needs. D5W is isotonic upon infusion, but becomes hypotonic as dextrose metabolizes to free water. It is indicated for hypernatremia or mild dehydration. Avoid in resuscitation, post-operative states, or cerebral edema, where free water exacerbates swelling. Provides minimal calories, 170 kilocalorie per liter, insufficient for sustained nutritional support. Half-normal saline, 0.45% NaCl, is hypotonic with an osmolarity of 154 milliosmoles per liter. It rehydrates cells in hypernatremia or diabetic ketoacidosis after initial isotonic resuscitation. Infuse slowly to avoid rapid shifts in serum sodium. Contraindicated in trauma, burns, or liver disease due to cerebral edema risks. Hypertonic solutions, such as 3% and 5% saline, have osmolarities exceeding 340 milliosmoles per liter. They are reserved for severe hyponatremia with neurological symptoms or elevated intracranial pressure. Administer via central line to avoid phlebitis and monitor serum sodium closely to prevent osmotic demyelination. Dextrose 10 to 50% solutions treat severe hypoglycemia, but require slow infusion to prevent vascular irritation. Hypotonic fluids, including 0.45% saline and post-metabolism. D5W, shift water into cells. Use them judiciously for hypernatremia correction or cellular dehydration. Avoid in patients at risk for cerebral edema, such as those with head injuries or hepatic encephalopathy. Rapid administration may precipitate dangerous fluid shifts. Manitol, an osmotic diuretic, reduces intracranial or intraocular pressure by drawing fluid into the vasculature. Monitor for renal injury and electrolyte imbalances. Colloids, albumin, dextrin, and hydroxyethyl starch expand plasma volume in critical hypovolemia. Synthetic colloids like HES carry risks of coagulopathy and kidney injury. Reserve colloids for cases where crystalloids fail. Fluid therapy is a careful balance between science and care. Here's what to keep in mind. Normal saline's chloride can tip the scales toward acidosis, balance with crystalloids like plasmolite. Ringer's lactate, avoid it in liver failure, lactate metabolism falters here. In brain injuries, skip dextrose. It risks swelling the very organ we aim to protect. For hypertonic saline, central access is preferred and strict monitoring is necessary. Fluids are not benign. Their misuse can escalate morbidity.
Let physiology guide every decision. As we conclude this exploration of fluid therapy, remember, it is the lifeblood of clinical care, a discipline where precision meets humanity. Every calculation you make, every fluid you choose, writes a story of survival. It is not just about balancing electrolytes or correcting volumes. It is about restoring the rhythm of life itself. Thank you for investing your time in mastering these principles, for prioritizing excellence, and for the unseen hours you spend refining your craft. As you step back into your practice, carry this mantra. Measure meticulously, act decisively, care relentlessly. Until the next time, keep learning, keep questioning, and keep championing the art of healing.